Right, it's the 24th of April 2018. I'm in a place called Feltwell. I've just been in the Church of St Mary's. There's two churches here. There's one St Nicholas, so I'm making my way to. Now, there could be thunder and lightning in a minute, so I'm getting a move on. Alberta's parked down the road there. We're hundreds of miles away from Somerset, but I don't care. We can always stop on the motorways. I just need to do a small video of this village of Feltwell, which is obviously much bigger than it was when the ancestors were here. Um, the church up here called St Nicholas is redundant. There's a pub called the Checkers, which might have a checkered history. <laughs> Pun. Um, and it's pouring with rain. I haven't really examined the other graveyard properly yet. There's also a very much bigger graveyard up here apparently. So it's all very exciting. I've had to put wellies, an umbrella. It's the first real rain we've had. I got caught in a small short storm the other night for about 10 minutes. But this is an all day thing. So all this is on behalf of Jolene, Duncan, Georgia and Dave on his side of the tree on this side of the tree but of course remembering that on my side we've also got lots of ancestors up here see the um, wet Whitmores could possibly have had um, a, a farm just around where they were farmers. That's a lovely picture, isn't it? St Mary's through the village. Look, imagine it with cows and dung, can't you? There's the pub there called the Checkers. Ah, oh, it's right next to. Of course, pubs and churches do go together, don't they? But it ain't open now. And there's for sale, look. Another pub hits the dust. Another pub. The Checkers. Wow, isn't it awful? The death of the pub in the village. Of course, I don't really know the history. But this could have been an old inn a long time ago. An L house. There's lots of farm buildings around here. That's Manor Farm over there, look. I'll just zoom in. So you might be able to find out which farm they had. There we go, look. That's Manor Farm. They might just have been farm labourers, you know. Often put themselves down as farmers. There's another old farm there down Sh Shorebeck. Off Hill Street, the sun, that's an old farm, a cluster, look. And there's the old pub. It all, it all plays part of the, the history, really, when we, um, when we look at these places. It's all part of the history of a place. Methwold Heath. Almost sounds Welsh, doesn't it? That's another village nearby where Whitmores could be buried, you see. Just because they're here doesn't mean they weren't in other villages as well. And Hockwold, of course. So this looks quite a central point, doesn't it? Especially with that tree there. That's a big barn there. And here we have, oh look, it would have had a tower once, a round tower. And it's open. Cool, that's good, isn't it? It's open. Oh, what a find. Wow, look at that. Oh. 
Wow. So this is the redundant church. I'm not, but there, there were um, Whitmore's buried back there in St. Mary's. I could, I hope that's not thunder I can hear. Of course, the thing is, unfortunately, I didn't have the computer running. I can't do any associated names. I wonder what that stands for there. That's probably a letter. Two. I don't know what that is. It probably there might be a book inside. But you can see where the tower has um, broken off there. Look, that's probably why it's redundant now. No money to repair it. Saint Nicholas. God, and an actual church. Oh, this is what the sort of thing I've been wanting to do while I'm up here. I'm going to go in straight away. God, if somebody locks you when you're in here, are you supposed to get out? Can't put your hand through there, can you? We just open that. It's to stop the birds coming in. What a lovely view this is. This does seem more like a central location in the village, doesn't it, here? With the village green now. St Nicholas Feltwell, this church is cared for by the Church Conservation Trust, a national charity protecting historic churches at risk. Although no longer used for regular worship, our churches remain consecrated and open to all. Wow. Please come in and look round. Please close the outer door. Stop the birds getting in. Wow, look at that old door, look. I've missed doing that one, but I had my break out the road. It still would have been a bit too much of a hike to come all that way, though. It's best to do it on the way home. I mean, I was going to go to Borough Green, but I think, well, if I'm coming up this way with Zara, we can do that then. <sighs> on the left is a large Norman tower arch. The clappers from the the three of the five bells which hung in the tower before it fell and hung there. The other two bells are now in Ely Cathedral and St. Mark's Church, Gabalafa in Cardiff. Another relic of the Norman church is the carved pilaster let into the wall by the altar. In the south aisle there is a 13th century piscina. The broken stone below it may have been the original mensa or altar. For many years it formed a step in the porch. <sighs> So 13th, 14th century. There we go, there's another sort of picture of it. It's recorded in the Doomsday Book, the name probably indicating a spring of fresh water. St. Nicholas Church already existed then and the original foundation may have been much older. The two Fertwell parishes were united in 1805 St. Nicholas, less centrally situated to St. Mary's, was declared redundant in 1973. The remains of the tower in the west wall incorporate the oldest part of the building, almost certainly Saxon. The tower fell in October 1898 while under repair. As the chancel and vestry have been demolished in 1862, the building now has an oddly truncated look with no chancel, and the tower almost gone at the west end. What remains is broader than it is long, most unusual in an old church. The Feltwell Society have indicated in the garden to the east of the church where the chancel and vestry stood. The check and pattern the easternmost is associated with Earl War Warren, a supporter of William the Conqueror. Ah. Take one of those, although I'm not staying. Ow. 
Oh, look, and there's um, look, some, some information. Information. So I'm just making an, this sort of thing you've got to do when you're out. It's raining. I haven't brought a Mac. Uh, 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 I haven't brought a bag. So that's where the bell's hung. That's what remains of the rounded tower. Probably Saxon, they say. Let's just go. Well, we won't go in there because they expect this danger of fallen masonry. I'm doing the video first in case anyone comes. So it's without um, an official altar then in chancel, but it might well have had one in the past. It's just hanging on. This large Bible is extremely interesting. This is a basket Bible covered in goat skin and was printed in 1717. John Basket described himself as printer of the King's Most Excellent Majesty for Great Britain and the University. The King was George I. Look. Wow. We are allowed to touch it. Look. Handle with care. Couple hundred years old, look. Look at us, parish felt well. Wow, I wonder if it's got any. This is a massive book, isn't it? That's really good, isn't it? Yeah, well, thank you kind place for letting us have a look. That Bible could have been there when Lockwood's family were living here. The silent tongues. That's what usually hits the bell and makes it chime. Five, the silent tongues. Five of us used to speak to you 200 years or more. We called you from your cottages and from the old Fenshore. With lofty tower, one morning we fell in 1894. No more will we call you to your prayers, for silence is our fate. Oh, that's sweet, isn't it? Well, someone's taking time to document all this for us. This is, um, and I could have ancestors from here. Don't forget, I'm very close. I've got them in Cambridgeshire, Suffolk, and Norfolk. And this looks like an old coffin. There's no mention of who would have been in it. It's quite big though, isn't it? You can smell the muskiness. You can smell the muskiness. Just going to turn up.